guys, what's up? Ellie Shadowity here, and welcome back to Empires. Today is the grand opening of Criticity's first bookshop. This empty little building over here is soon going to be full of glorious literature, using never-before-seen innovations in bookshelf technology. Here I have a crafting recipe for the new chiseled bookshelves. And I thought these would be the perfect way to display all the different books I have. I can just pop them in the shelves like this, and then people can come by and browse and take whichever ones they want. So let me clear all these cobwebs away and we can start building the bookshelves. Voila! The bookshelves are in, and my first customer has already turned up. Sir, it's not open yet. Please take your llama elsewhere. There are no books for sale. These are just decoys. Rather embarrassingly, I actually don't have all the materials I need to publish books. I have lots of empty books, but no way of writing in them. I can, however, find lots of feathers in my chicken slaying machine down here. Okay. I will not ask questions. I will just collect the feathers and run away. We have more pressing matters. I need ink sacs. And since I hate getting my fur wet, there's no way I'm collecting them myself. So, instead, I will procure the services of Pirate Joe, who is actually banned from Animalia for stealing the Town Square crystals. So it looks like I'll be making a visit to Eversea to enlist his help. Ah! Ew! Oh, hi, hi! Halt! Who oh. goes there? Oh, it's just, it's just me! A customer! Who is me? Oh! Oh. I walked the plank! Help! I'm drowning! You know what? Maybe you're not the right person for the job after all. Help me! Here I am. Oh, it's Big Head. Hey, Big Head. S excuse me. I would like to enlist your services. I need someone to go into the water and kill a bunch of squid and collect all the ink sacs. Of course you would come to me, the piratiest pirate of them all. How much is it going to cost me? Oh, now we're talking my kind of language. I need your whole inventory. Mm. Oh my. What do you have going on? I can't talk about it. Okay. Actually, I will talk about it. I'm opening bookstores, so if you can read... You can't read, oh. can you? No. <gasps> That's why you draw scribbles on your treasure maps, isn't it? It is. <gasps> Speaking of treasure maps, that's what I would want in exchange. I have oh. fellow crewmates that are lost at sea. And if you can find me a treasure map that leads me to one of my crewmates that's lost, then I will trade you for the ink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I think I saw one of those lying around, so I could definitely bring it here and trade it to you for some ink sacks. Perfect. You have yourself a deal. I'll see you at sunrise. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, sure. Of course. I'm going to take the shortcut. The portal. Yes. Not that I'm take in a rush. Portal. I'm actually taking this at a perfectly leisurely pace because I'm not in a rush. I just simply need to get home and collect that treasure map, which is just in my chest somewhere. Okay. I lied. I do not have a treasure map, but I do have a plan. I did not wake up this morning prepared to run a scam, but it looks like that's what we'll be doing. The night is not very long, so I must get working on a devious plan. First, I crafted a map and gave this banner a mysterious name. And then I flew off into the night like Batman, but an evil Batman with bad intentions. I was looking for a location to mark the map when I flew over the spooky mangrove forest. And I thought to myself, a lot of people go missing in here. Wouldn't it make sense that one of Joey's crewmates stumbled in here and got lost? So I set up a camp, tried to make it look like one of Joey's crewmates had been here. And for added drama, I extinguished the campfire. Then I got a little carried away and I added some bones to the floor. The corpse of his old crewmate, perhaps, or just the leftovers from his last meal. Neither is true, of course, it's all a ruse. But now the map looks legit, the scene is staged, and it's just in time for sunrise. Oh, just in time. The sun has risen. Ahoy there. You're late. I'm not. The sun is just rising. Did you bring what I asked for? I have what huh? you want. Show me the sacks. Oh. The sacks are in my hands. 
So they are. On the count of three? Sure. One, two, three. Ah, uh, yes. Ooh, oh, fabulous. The last known <gasps> whereabouts. Yeah, so oh. much ink. I'm going to publish so many books. Good luck with the map. Hope you find your crewmate. Thank you. Bye. Pleasure doing business with you. He doesn't even realize I scammed him. Now I have all the ink I need to start my publishing empire. <laughs> ah, don't judge me. Now the real work begins. I'll just take a little seat over here and start writing. Ta-da! The books have been printed. Each one is unique and has been written by some of you in the comments last episode. So let's get the first ones in. These are all adventure books. They will go in this bookshelf, which I will label adventure. Now we can just plop them in, try and spread them out like a display maybe. There. How cool is this? Wow. Now, all of the horror books. They will go here. Horror. Ta-da! Oh, and now the final section, romance. Here are all my romance novels. Whoa, we are really short on romance novels. Now that concludes the filling of this shop. All we need to do is hire a librarian. Ah, slight problem. We have a severe lack of librarians around here. We have plenty of homes, we have plenty of jobs, but villagers need food to breed, and I forgot to feed them. Yes, I I did forget to feed the villagers. Sorry. So, before I can increase the population of the Magic District, I actually need to do something quite drastic. Over here, just beyond the Froggy District, is the tram station. Or at least what will one day be a tram station. And I thought we could build a bridge over here and surround it with fields of wheat to feed all my villagers. So first I flattened all of the land and then I got to work with the long tedious process of planting all the seeds. Two hours later. That took way longer than I thought it would. But now I have so much wheat I can breed my villagers. Now, I heard pandas are notoriously difficult to breed, but let's see. Take it. Take it. Come on, guys. We really need more than three librarians. Things are getting desperate around here. These pandas will not breed. What on earth is going on? Yay! A child is born. The next day. Don't question why these pandas look so weird. Or this guy. There, much better. Now let's trap a good villager in to be a bookkeeper. This one with the protection for trade is the most valuable. So in you go. Now, hopefully he'll be safe back there tending to the shop and we can move on to the next bookshop, which is a little bit different. This might be a bit ambitious, but this bookshop up here is going to be a magical bookshop. And it's going to look much like the previous one, except it's going to be full of enchanted books. Every enchantment you could dream of is for sale right here. So let's clear out the cobwebs and start putting in the bookshelves. Perhaps we should also label them for each enchantment. Ta-da! Here are all the categories I've sorted them into. Now all we have to do is fill the bookshelves. I do have a few already. I have some thorns, which would go into the armor enchants category. And I have some looting three books. Oh! <clears throat> just pretend I didn't set off a firework in my highly flammable bookshop. Now, I just need to fill the rest of these bookshelves, which can only mean one thing the tedious task of refreshing villager trades. And when they finally give me the good trades, I turn them into pandas. Now we have all these panda villagers and they each have the different books that I'm going to need. All I need to do is stock up and fill out all the bookshelves. Ta-da! Wow. Now there's no excuse to walk around with these inferior enchanted items. And I promise to upgrade those after I clock out from my mayor duties. Because we still have one more bookshop to take care of over here. <gasps> uh, what are you doing here? Oh no, oh my gosh. Oh, I just Thanosed him. 
My bad. Let's build a bookshop to distract from my heinous crime. This time we have a few more genres of books for this bookstore. First we have books about cooking, of which there are only two. Easy recipes? And a recipe for Animalia's national dish, slimed roast chicken with berry sauce. So there we go. Next is the folklore category. There's The Wonders of Demons, A Time of High Magic, Mages of Forgotten History, Supernatural Beings 101, Witches, and The Merfolk Legend. Quite an exciting array of folklore. Then we have The Poems. Yes, I hope these pandas love poetry, because this shelf is almost full. Then, an exciting selection of biographies about such famous people as the Copper King, Fiona Finkelberry, Ariana Gote, and the Ocean Queen, whoever that is. I don't even know if half of these people are real, but I will publish these books anyway. Ta-da! We also have a small selection of how-to books, of course, how to Redstone, and how to run from aliens. In this bookshelf, we have books on nature, including an exciting write-up of the Crimson Panda, and of course, a six-page deep dive into a long line of felines, and finally, the history of the animal villagers. Ta-da! And for the last bookshelf, we have historic events, such wonders as the founding of Critter City, the River of Shines, and the catastrophic crash. Now, I hope that all of these wonderful books will help educate my villagers and bring prosperity to Critter City. But that is it for this episode of Empires. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.